guys, welcome back to Floss Tube number 11. So we're gonna kick off this video with a kit parade. I have been enjoying watching some kit parades on different channels and I thought that that would be fun to do. So basically a kit parade is all of the projects that I have, all of the patterns that I've purchased with also thinking about what fabric I'm gonna use and floss already. Cause sometimes you just go ahead and purchase a pattern cause you're like, well, that's so beautiful, but you don't make a kind of more immediate plan to stitch it. So I feel like kitting up is the next stage after purchasing a pattern that you're like gonna be moving it into your whips soon. So first I'm gonna show you all of the kit ups that I've done. And I have some more that are near ready, but don't maybe have, um, all of the kits have almost all of the threads. Some of them are missing just like a few that maybe I just need to figure out some DMC trade-ins for that because the threads have just been not able to be gotten for a long time. The things that I'm not going to show you today are things that I haven't picked out fabrics for yet. And so I will share that in a future kit parade when I pick out what fabrics I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and start this kit parade with something that I haven't even really thought about <laughs> stitching on in a long while, but it's kitted up. So this is pattern number four by the little stitch girl, Haunted Hill Road. Trick or treat, saw my feet it says. So um, I have this piece of shale from, uh, I think this is a picture of this plus fabric. I got it at Stitcher's Paradise. And this is actually the called for color for one of the projects that I have coming up in this kit up. But um, it's not a big enough piece because I cut into this for um, actually for the whip that I was working on from my Mania projects this last week. So I wish that I could use it for that, but it's not big enough. So I decided to use it for this project instead. So I'm using the called for overdides with this. And, um, yeah, like I said, no immediate plans to stitch on this, but I do think it's going to be really cute and I haven't stitched anything from this designer yet. Um, by the way, let me just go ahead and tell you what's on my nails. So this is the new Beetlejuice collection from Moonshine Manny. That's my indie brand. If you are new to my channel and just joining me for the floss tube content, mostly this, um, channel is about nail polish and a lot about indie nail polish but I do mainstream reviews too, OPI China Glaze, Orly, um, Color Club, but indie nail polish is where all the fun happens in my opinion. So I'm going to put up on the screen some close-ups of what it is I'm wearing just in case you've never tried indie polish. Basically it's independently manufactured nail polish. So I create all of this, the concepts are all mine, then I hand mix it, hand bottle it, and I send it out to you. And it's cruelty free, and um, it's 10 free, so it's safer for you, and it's um, a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. So that's what's on my nails today. Okay, this next kit up is for Blackbird Designs Octopus Garden. If I don't have the pattern in front of me, like if I'm working off an image I have on my phone, which is actually my preferred way to stitch, is just looking at the pattern on my phone and blowing it up really big. If I don't have the pattern in front of me to show you, I will put it on the screen so you can see what the finished product is gonna look like. So this is a hand dyed piece of um, just this Zweigart that you can get at Hobby Lobby. This is a 46 count oat bristol and I hand dyed it with some um, greens and teals and yellows as you can see. So I wanted to create a cool effect kind of similar to what it is stitched on and then I'm stitching it with the called for threads. Um, I believe they're all gentle arts, yeah. So. That is gonna be, I have a few of the patterns from the um, Beatles inspired pieces and this is the first one that I have kitted up. Actually, that's not true. I have Strawberry Fields Forever already started. So this is the, this is the second one I have. Next up I have this pattern from Shepherd's Bush. Love is where you plant it. And um, this one is overdyed. It calls for overdyeds, unlike that other pattern that I have is silks. And as you can see, this one is stitched on a kind of light 
uh, beigey background or fabric. I have chosen another hand dyed piece. This is a 28 count Lugana, which I have dyed with a variation of this rose shade. And then it's using the called for over dyed threads. And this one has considerably different color threads than almost anything else I'm stitching right now. So I'm really excited to do this, but I'm not in a spring frame of mind currently. So I'm gonna save this and start this after Christmas probably. All right, here's my next project. This is Trick or Treat, released from Cottage Garden Samplings. This is a more of a re recent release. And as you can see, it's stitched on kind of this yellowy, greeny, olive brown, grungy fabric, which is so delicious. So I decided to create my kind of um, similar look on my own. If you can't tell, I've been really into dyeing my own fabrics. This, I started with a 32 count Belfast linen in natural. And so I'm gonna be stitching this um, one over, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do one over two or two over two. I'm using the called for over dyes, which as you can see, just charcoal and persimmon. And then it's mostly um, DMC and I'm really excited for how it's gonna look on this. So I wanna start this soon because it's almost Halloween and I need more Halloween projects. It's just hard because Sampler September falls right in the prime um, Halloween stitchy time. So this um, dye that I did has a lot of blue in it as you can see and the um, called for fabric doesn't have all that blue but I think it's going to be, here's a really strong green part. I think it's gonna be really fun. So here's another project that I will probably be saving till um, January, February to start, but I'm really, really excited about it because it's so beautiful. I've also recently discovered that I'm kind of obsessed with Plum Street samplers. Um, it might have developed into my favorite designer and um, I have a lot of projects that I'm ready to start from this brand, but haven't actually started them, which you're thinking, no, then why are they your favorite designer? Basically everything that I see stitched on anybody else's channel by this designer, I'm just obsessed with. So this one's really fun because there's a lot of pinks in here. We even have, as you can see, we have some yellows and oranges. Um, this is gonna be stitched on this piece of fabric and flare. 40 count in the shade stone, um, one over two. However, the margins are gonna be really small. So I have to think about this. It's just a slightly modeled piece of beigey gray with a, like a tiny pinch of like peach in it. Um, I have to decide, cause I've measured this a few times and it's just gonna kind of barely fit, but it gives the look that I'm going for so I have some more thinking to do, but since I'm not gonna start this till spring or late winter, I have a little while to decide. All right, here's my next project, Huckleberry Farm from the Blue Flower. And this is the pattern that I said called for that shale. So I really wanted to still do purple and shale is just like barely purple. It's gray with a little bit of orchid. And I decided to dye my own fabric and go really purple. If you don't know, purple is my favorite color. It's very pleasing to me to think about stitching on this for this whole project. And I floss dropped these on here and I think it's gonna be good. It's the called for DMCs and um, over dyes. I mean, look at that lichen on there. That's pretty awesome. So I'm excited about it. I think, I, I mean, it might be obnoxiously bright, but I think it's gonna be really fun. So this is only a 28 count Lugana, so I'm gonna stitch it over, I'm gonna stitch one over one, which as you know, I have a few projects now, one over one on Lugana, and it's not my fave, but maybe the more that I do it, the more I will like it. All right, next kit up is for the pattern um, this Happy Morning by Plum Street Sampler. I will pop an image up on the screen for you of how it's gonna look finished. 
And this piece of fabric is Morning Fog. It is a 36 count linen from Be Stitch Me. I'm part of the Fabric of the Month Club for 40 count actually, but it's been hard to get 40 count lately. And so I have another piece that I'm gonna show you in the haul section. This is the piece that I got last month and I forgot to show it to you guys. And I think that this pattern's gonna look okay on here. This is the called for um, Overdyes and DMC. And this one thread here looks a lot like the base color, but this goes, this is like the color of the door, I think, or something like that. So I think it's gonna be okay if I get there and it's just not gonna work for me, I'll just change this color of floss because I really, really like this background. It's gonna look totally different than the um, vintage version look because that's more of a sampler look but I just really want to do it on this blue. So I'm really excited about this. Again, another Plum Street that I haven't started yet. All right, next is another pattern from Shepherd's Bush. I have three in here. So three patterns from Shepherd's Bush and none of them started yet. Again, I will probably start this maybe like March or April, something like that. This is a very little, tiny little pattern. So I was able to use this piece of 32 count even weave in the color ice that I just found at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I will probably, I don't know, maybe. I'll maybe end up modeling this just a little bit with a little extra gray or something on there or purple, but maybe I'll just leave it. I don't have a lot of pieces that are just stitched on plain fabric anymore. So this is using all of the called for overdyes as you can see, and just Shepherd's Bush just uses the prettiest colors. I'm not as prim in my color preferences, so something like this is just right up my alley. Okay, another Plum Street. This is Live on Little. This is probably the one that I'm going to start the soonest out of all of the Plum Streets that you're seeing me share today in my kit up parade, my kit parade. Um, this one is nautical and I love nautical stuff even though I don't live anywhere near any oceans or bodies of water. I just love the color schemes. So I have chosen this 40 count fabric and flare in the color pecan for this. However, again, I think it's going to just really run the risk of being slightly too small. So this finished size, this is a, oh yeah, this is a 307 by 207. So I kind of have this here like as a placeholder, but I think I might order another piece of cream and switch it out because I did order a piece of cream Newcastle and over dyed it and I love how it looks. I hand dyed it. So I think I might do that process again for this piece. So I'm just loving all these threads. It's so gorgeous. I can't wait to get started. All right, next up is Teresa Kogut Let Love Rain from her Patreon. I think actually you can get this pattern now um, from other places as well. And I'm using the um, called for overdyes and DMCs. If you haven't been able to tell by now, I like to use playing cards for my floss drops because it's just really, really easy. You don't have to cut them out or anything. Um, and so I'm really, really excited for this one because not a lot of my samplers have these blue colors. So this is gonna be really fun and these shades are just so yummy. So again, this is a piece of fabric that I hand dyed. This is a 46 count, um, I think it was called like raw Bristol or something like that. And then I just processed it with um, just growing strengths of tan. One of my favorite ways to hand dye my fabrics. So um, yeah, I am really, really excited for this piece. It's gonna be so cute. All right, here is my next kit. This is Lila's Studio Spring Quaker. And you know, I've started the Halloween one and I really, really love it. I'm really excited to start this in, you know, February or March, probably a little earlier, probably when I'm getting tired of Christmassy stuff and I'm ready for spring. So it's using the called for overdyes and DMCs, of course. And here we have dried petal from Fabric and Flare. So same story. It's this really pretty, slightly rosy, mauve-y kind of modeling that's printed on here. It's just a one-sided fabric, but it's cut a little bit smaller than a fat quarter. So a lot of things that a fat quarter might normally fit on, I have, have been having trouble with that, my fabric and flare not fitting if I thought it was that size. So I'm gonna remeasure this again and just make sure, but I think it would be so, so sweet on this color. All right, next up is my third Shepherd's Bush pattern. This is called Sail Away. And this was a kit that I purchased at the shop. So this is kind of 
I didn't really kit this up, but it's kitted up and ready to go. And I absolutely fell in love with the model in Shepherd's Bush. And this is actually surprisingly small, this little piece of fabric here. So maybe they're not giving me a very like big allowance for the side. I'm not really sure, but it already comes with the silks that you need. And it's just... It's just the amount that you would need, so you're not getting the whole skein like if you would have kitted it up yourself. So I ha I would have preferred to kit this up myself and pick my own fabric probably, but it only came like this. So that's why I've done it that way. These colors are just so beautiful. It does just make me feel a little bit concerned since I didn't buy each of these silks separately and I'm not gonna have enough for everything, but let's cross our fingers that I will. So this is a 32 count, I think it said natural vanilla on it on the pattern or on the um, information page. So um, this color is just like basically the exact same color as this. So I'm not sure about that, but maybe it's for the sheep or something. So we'll see. All right, here is the next one. We're almost done. This is in Friendship from Plum Street Samplers. And I got this um, inspired by my new friendship with my swatcher and friend Heidi that we love cross stitch together and um, I just think it was so, so sweet. This is a little bit of a smaller pattern, so I think it's gonna fit fine on this if I don't do it over one. But this is another 28 count Lugana that I hand dyed, and I don't know if it's easy to tell, but it's actually gray, not white. And I'm using the called for over dye flosses. All right, so this is my final one that I have to share with you. Well, kind of. Um, this is that piece of cream Newcastle. Actually, no, it's not Newcastle because this is 46 count. And I hand dyed it with this process that I think this is gonna work really well for that other um, pattern, the, what was it, Live On Little. This is for the Teresa Kogut um, Heaven and Nature pattern. Sorry for the crinkling. So I'm really excited to get started on this during Sampler September. So that's why I'm not gonna pull this piece of fabric for the other pattern. I will just go ahead and dye another piece to look kind of similar to this. So this is stitched on 40 count linen and it's 284 by 360. It's huge. So I'm stitching it on 46 count and I have all of the called for DMC and over dye threads as you can see. And I'm not really ready to get into the Christmas mode yet, but as soon as Halloween is over, I am going to be so excited to have this piece started. So this one's gonna be just really, really fun. I don't have a ton of Christmas pieces right now, so I'm excited to stitch on this. Okay, this is the actual last kit up that I'm gonna share with you today. I have about 10 more that are in the works, but I'm missing pieces of linen or the majority of the flosses, things like that. So we'll have another one of these in maybe a couple months. Um, so this is Newcastle Bouquet. This is another large pattern, 353 by 217. Well, as you can see, it's very wide. And I wanted to, I didn't purchase a piece of gold fabric for this, but I wanted to try my hand at um, hand dyeing it. And so I started with actually a white piece of um, 40 count and I just did different processes of tan on this for a while and then I used tan with a little bit of yellow and then I just kind of like blasted it with a really strong marigold right at the end and took it off like almost immediately but it made this really gorgeous strong yellow shade obviously as you can see not the same color as that but I think that's going to be okay especially because some of these colors are really similar to that base color and they might not pop as much so I'm going to use the called for DMCs and over dyes and um, I think it's going to look really really cute on there so I'm excited for that and it's got a great big old moth on it and some cardinals. So fun and I'm sure I'm gonna just love all of this strong red. That is my final kit up. All right, so those are all the things that I've kitted up and in the wings kind of ready to go. As you saw, I do have some samplers that I think I will be starting during the month of September because I am doing sampler September. I'm not doing it as exclusively as maybe you might see on a different floss tube. I have some samplers that I have started this month and that I'm going to focus a little bit more on this month, but I'm not going to be stitching samplers exclusively. So you'll probably see some of those kits 
the kit ups that I did in a future video in September perhaps. So now I'm going to talk to you about my whips for the last two weeks. So I have a floss tube video every week. By the way, if you normally tune in on my channel for nail polish videos, floss tube is a part where I can talk about all things cross stitch. I did show some crochet in my first video, but since then I've just been talking about cross stitch. So this last week, I almost always give you guys an update on my pain-free crafts spring montage and my Hade piece, but I didn't work on those at all because I was working on some sample or September things. So you're not getting an update on that. I know you've had that basically since my first video, um, but I won't be chatting about those today, so maybe you'll see them next time. Maybe not. We'll see what I'm feeling like. Um, I almost said swatching, what I'm feeling like stitching on. So now I'm going to run through all the stuff that um, I stitched on in the last couple weeks and let's see what kind of progress I've made. Okay, now let's talk about whips. I actually worked on seven different whips in the last two weeks and it didn't actually feel like that much. But then when I was pulling everything out for today, it actually is a lot. So I don't have the... Um, like I get bored kind of quickly, which is why I like to work on a lot of different things. This is the first thing that I worked on after our last video. So if you remember, I had already done most of this, but I hadn't finished these little bats all along the side. And then on the bottom, there's these little guys down here. And then there was this part on the side that went framing along each side. And then at the top, there's these candelabras and skulls at the top there. And I... I'm obsessed <laughs> with the aesthetic that this designer uses. I am so obsessed. I actually have purchased um, two other of her cells and I don't know when I'll get to them, but I know that I will love them when I do because I absolutely loved this. So also since the last time we had a video, this little black border here is four uh, stitches wide and then it goes all around the whole thing except for the top. That was what took the majority of the time. I worked on this for more days than I planned um, because I was just building up the width of this. So that was kind of the least fun obviously about this stitch because you just really have to build up that depth. Um, this is stitched on a piece of it's either 16 or 18 count Ada that I hand dyed. Um, but after I got done with that, I mean, I was just so excited to start putting in the little bits of other colors she has. So this first one here, I feel like is the siren and I have, I think the first seven. So I have to get going on this, but, um, and I'm really excited to work on it in preparation for Halloween. But like I mentioned before, <clears throat> it is sampler September. And so Hopefully I get some time to work on this because I absolutely adore it. Oh yeah, that's right. This was actually from before my last floss tube. So actually I only worked on six projects this week because I forgot to show this last time. So this is the pattern Cardinal Points. It is from Long Dog Samplers and it was kind of like a collab with Gentle Art. So it has a lot of Gentle Art flosses, a lot of color changes. And just look at all of these awesome colors. So, so, so many colors. So I don't think I did quite a middle start. Well, the middle start, um, lately I've been starting top left. The middle start would have been right in the middle of the letters and I wanted to get going with some colors. So I started on the, the potted plant right above the middle of the words. And there's a cardinal that's gonna sit on top of that plant on top of the flower that's on top of the plant. So this was actually, it felt like quite a lot of stitching. And um, yeah, this was a couple weeks ago. So it's been a while since I've touched this. I just found this part really interesting. Like when I looked at the pattern, I definitely never zeroed in on this color scheme right here, this black, yellow, gold, or um, black, gold, orange. And I was stitching this very first and I was like, whoa, what is this pattern? This doesn't look to me at all like what the main pattern looks like, but this is gonna be huge. So this is a 18 count Ada. It's just white. I didn't stitch, I didn't um, over dye it at all because there's so much color in here that I really just wanted everything to pop equally and so I didn't dye it at all. So that is Cardinal Points. I have been excited about this pattern 
for like six months every time the ever since the first time I saw it on somebody's floss tube so I finally started it woo all right this is the most recent thing I stitched on I was really really excited to get started on this but I was waiting for a silk pack to come in. So this is the Smith sampler from the Scarlet House. I have seen this stitched up. I think it's on Saltbox Stitcher's um, sampler parade. If you wanna go watch her sampler parade, that is not the first place that I saw this from, but I am obsessed. It's so, so beautiful. So this is also my first Scarlet House pattern. I um, went ahead and went with a Vicki Clayton conversion for the silk pack. Because of how they're bobbinated, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see the colors there, but um, you know, it's a lot of browns. It's autumnal colors. It's a lot of browns and some red and orange and stuff, but I really like them so far. So um, Vicki Clayton, I will link the website where I went to go purchase them. Like they're already packed up for you. So it lists the silks that you would use that came, um, I think they were MPIs, and then it changes them over to these and it's much more budget friendly. So I really, really liked it. And I haven't been able to stitch on this very much because right after I started stitching on this, I got into my kit up frenzy. So I did get a little bit done. You know, I did, I, I did a top left start and I did this guy and then I came down and then I went over here. So, you know, I've done a little bit, but certainly I wanted to get a lot more done on this because I was so, so excited to stitch it. So this piece of fabric is an R&R &R, um, Mayflower mocha, I think. And then I over dyed it because it was just too boring for me. <laughs> so I put a little bit of rosiness in it and um, it actually left a little bit of marking on there where it didn't completely dissolve. But I've decided I don't care about that because it just makes it unique to me. I haven't had that problem with a lot of the things that I've hand dyed, but I think it's fun. So really excited about this piece. All right, this is the piece for my 2022 Mania that I used the random the randomizer to choose which of my Mania pieces I would work on in this fortnight. And so we chose together the Ink Circles pattern called Half the Fun. This is the one that's stitched on that 18 count Ada shale. And I love it, I love it so much. Um, it's really delightful to just stitch with one color. This is just the called for Gloriana Charcoal. I believe it's called for. Um, yes, it's called for. And the called for fabric is Relic by uh, picture this plus, but I just so much prefer it in this colorway. So anyway, I really, really like it. As you can see, the pattern repeats itself as you go around in a circle. And so it's kind of hard to remember which side is up, but actually I'm facing it upside down for you guys. Case in point, it's really hard to remember which way is up. I remember by the fact that this surged part is at the top or not the surge, but you know what I mean? So that's how I remember, but in any case, I really, really love it. I got quite a bit done. I don't feel like I had very much going on at all. I think I did both buses. I think I did all of this. So super enjoyable. Mm, Tim's cooking dinner and it smells good. Okay, so this piece, I was also really, really excited to start this week. Um, this is Modern Folk Embroidery Fruits of Plenty. And I have chosen my own floss here and I hand dyed the fabric. It looks very different from the designer's um, listing, but I think it's really fun that way. So I just started with a piece of 40 count, um, I think it was antique white Newcastle, and I put a bunch of greens and yellows on it and I really, really love it. It's all over dyed in some tan at first, so it's not stark, stark white. And then I added the yellows and greens to give me a nice contrast to my teal and gray. It's, it's called Carriage Black and then we have Deep Sea. So I just thought those would be really pretty together. And if you haven't tried a Modern Folk Embroidery, I've had this on my plan to start for a really long time, but it's just like a ton of little motifs. This is going to be so nice and small because it's stitched on 40 count. So I'm just really loving it. 
Okay, this is Fox and Rabbit Mary Morgans, and this one was quite a departure, again, from other things that I'm stitching because it has a really vibrant color scheme, and I've popped up on the screen there what it's gonna look like. Um, the <laughs> called for colors are just so wild. Here they are here, so there's just gonna be so much going on in here, which, I am not sure how I'm feeling about, to be honest with you. It's just a lot for my eye to look at. I tried to pick a pretty um, bland color, not bland, but very neutral. This is a fabric and flare printed piece again, and I cannot remember what it's called, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm moving this piece all around because this fabric is just like kind of trying to get away from me right now. But I got quite a bit done. And I just, I wanted to make my way over into the letters and I got going on it and I was just like, wow, I'm just really not sure how I'm feeling about this. Just these colors together are so wild. So anyway, I will probably pick this up again for sample September and see if I can get some more done. Okay, my final whip was this one that you guys voted that I start on for my next sampler. And this is the Autumn Sampler by Marajka, maybe is how you say it. And it's just, the colors are so, so beautiful. And I discovered after opening it that you actually stitch this back part and then you stitch each of these little parts separately and then you stitch them onto your piece of fabric, which is so, so interesting. So I feel like I got quite a bit done. However, I just don't know why, but I'm not feeling this very much. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because to my eye, this appearance looks like it needs a lot of backstitch. And because I haven't done the backstitch yet, it just feels like a big smush to my eye. I don't know. I'm not loving this yet, just to be honest. I think this is on a 14 count Ada. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's because it's on Ada. I'm not loving it as much. I'm not really sure. Also, since the last time I had a floss tube, I have not stitched anything on a hoop. I took everything off my cue snaps, everything off my hoops. I've just been stitching everything in hand and I've been thoroughly enjoying that. So I didn't know I was an in hand stitcher, but boy, I really, really love not having to um, go back and forth around that hoop. So anyway, I'm excited to see what this looks like when I have added um, backstitching. So maybe I'll go and do a little bit of that. I usually don't do backstitching till the very end because I don't want it to get pulled or stretched or anything. But I guess if I'm not using a hoop, that's not going to really get affected that way. So I'm just going to pull in a little bit so you can see better there. The it's a lot of blending. They have you do blending of the different flosses and I just want to love it so bad. Maybe that's what it is. Um, it's just like a cacophony of colors all smushed right now. It's not making a lot of sense to me, but I want to love it so bad because I just love these colors together on here so, so much. So it's almost like, I think what it is, is it kind of looks watercolor. And I think that's what really, really appeals to me, this watercolor appearance of it. And without the backstitching, it just looks like a really, really busy, overexcited situation going on. So maybe that's what it is. Talking through that helped me figure out what it is. I think it's, I think it's that. So we'll get the backstitching on there and I will love it more. So that is my final whip. Next, I'm going to talk about haul. So I didn't buy a ton of patterns in the last couple weeks. You can probably figure out I was more buying floss and dyeing fabric. Um, so I do have a few things that I'm gonna share and I also am gonna share some footage of a new stitchy shop that I adventured to. I found one a little bit closer to me than Craft Center Fine Stitchery. I do really love that store. This store is called Pine Needles. When you go to Google them online, it shows that they're a quilt shop, which they are a lot of quilty things in there, but they do also have some cross, cross stitch things. So I'll just show the footage that I have at the end of the haul. All right, so now to haul. I did not shop a ton except for floss and linen, um, but I, I bought two patterns and of course, <laughs> another Plum Street. This is Blackberry House. I saw somebody um, stitching on this and I was like, oh, I was just smashed in the face with how gorgeous 
these colors are together. Oh, it looks so, so divine. So really, really excited about this. Haven't started it yet. Um, I am starting to get it kitted up, but it's not kitted up yet, and I don't have the fabric that I want for it yet. So we will look at this again sometime soon. The other pattern that I purchased is Long Dog Samplers Spangled. I think that 123 sent me an email that said that their, their patterns were on sale or something. I don't know. Anyway, I just found this on 123 Stitch. And I just, I in fact, I have a ton of Long Dog in my wish list. But this was just so cute. Like, I don't really have anything yet that looks like a quilty vibe going on. And quilts remind me of my paternal grandma. Look at these adorable fruit baskets. So I have kind of, let's see on the back. I've kind of started kidding this up a little bit. There you can see some of the colors. Isn't that gonna be beautiful? So it's stitched on white it looks like, but I will not be stitching it on white. I've gotta put it on something else. Probably a creamy tan situation. So anyway. Really, really excited about this. I don't have imminent plans to start this, but I I don't know what to tell you guys. I really love Long Dog. All right, and I'm sorry if this crinkles at all. This is my, um, must be August, August Be Stitch Me fabric of the month. And this is another 36 count linen. This is Water Nymph. I'm going to flip it over one second. That's a nice thing about editing is I can remove those sounds for you. So isn't it beautiful? I think I have some hanks of silk coming um, from overseas that I want to stitch some long dog <laughs> patterns with. And I think that this might be the first one that I choose. I'll pick maybe the br the one that has a lot of browns. So that is another thing that I have haul uh, that I've shopped for since the last time we met, but I don't have them in hand yet, so I can't show you. So Anyway, isn't this gorgeous? So you can go check out the Be Stitch Me website. She just opened a uh, her flagship store, her brick and mortar. Um, I thought maybe it had her website on there, but it doesn't. Anyway, I will link in the description bar below. Unfortunately, the video footage seems to have not saved. I'm so sad, but here's the outside of this cute little shop. And then I have one more picture for you as well. All right, so lastly, I usually talk to you guys about plans. So I mentioned that I'm going to start maybe one or two of the samplers that you saw me kit up. And um, maybe, we'll see. Maybe I'll save one for now and then one for after next video. Um, but mostly I'm going to be pulling out the samplers that have previously been started. I'm gonna look at those, see which ones that I'm interested in stitching on this um, next little period of time. And then I also am going to pick a new pattern from my mania last year to focus on. So you saw my progress on the pattern that we picked together um, last week doing the random generator. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a new one for this next fortnight. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So now it is time to spin the wheel and find out what my random... Um, stitch is going to be for this next two weeks. So these are all of my 2022 mania pieces that I'm not bored of or that I'm not just like, I haven't just even either finished. So I finished one of them and then a number of them I have since starting those in May decided that I'm just not into stitching them anymore. And sometimes that happens. So there are 15 left that I'm actually into stitching. So I guess I ditched seven of them. So let me change the randomizer to 15. And as you can see, last week we did number nine. So if nine rolls again for some reason, then we will um, choose another number. So here we're gonna randomize number four. So number four is the fox, a year in the woods. Yay, so fun. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. I will pop a picture up in the um, window there if you aren't familiar with that um, series of all different animals from the whole year. I think I have four or five of them. And I know that some people are stitching them all on the same fabric. I didn't plan ahead or on four different fabrics for the different seasons. I didn't plan ahead. So my fox is just on one piece of fabric. So I'll get a little bit more done on that in the next two weeks. And that will be really, really exciting. 
All right, so that pretty much covers everything. I had such a fun last couple weeks stitching. Honestly, I was really working on some things that I really, really enjoyed. And um, so, I don't know. They might be calling back to me again. We'll see if I end up pulling them back out. Especially that um, Supernatural Sal. That one is so fun and so pretty. So, anyway, um, yeah been really really enjoying myself I uh, want you to comment down below if you have a current project that you're working on cross stitch or other craft related something that is helping you get that downtime that you time a little self-care let me know let me know what your favorite project is that you're working on right now um, I really appreciate you stopping by for this video and I hope you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you're notified whenever I put up a new video most of my videos will be nail polish re related content but once every two weeks, I do a floss tube update. So I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I will see you back very soon. Bye.